for example, KKR started in 1976. When KKR started in 1976, their first few investments are pretty good. And that's pretty normal for about any private equity firm because when you start, either it goes well and you stay, or it goes badly and you get that, right? So even if it was like pure randomness, the people who are staying in, in business will have always at the beginning of a track record, a strong track record, strong cash flow, strong realization. And the IR of KKR is 23% net of fees. Gross of fees is more than 30 or something like that. It means that all the cash flows they got at the beginning of like the 1980s are assumed to have been reinvested all the way to today at 23% a year. People don't have a good in intuition for compounding cash flows uh, or compounding returns, but you, I encourage people to go in Excel and just put in $10 million in 1980, growing at 23% a year net of fees would be worth today. And it's going to be like in the hundreds of billions. Of course, nobody who has just put 10 million in KKR in 1980 is sitting on 100 billion today. What that means is that the money that KKR made in the early 80s is, is supposedly worth 100 billion plus today. And KKR in any given year invests about 10 billion, 5 billion, things of that magnitude. And so if it goes well, that 5 billion becomes 10 billion. If things don't go so well, 5 billion stays 5 billion, something like that. But the difference of plus minus 5 billion, in my example, is peanuts compared to the 100 billion plus that is all these reinvested cash flows that are supposedly uh, uh, worth so much money. Which means that every year when KKR publishes their uh, IR, it's the same number because no matter what they do in a year, it won't change the fact that they are supposed to sit on so much money from reinvested investments, distributions. So that's a very good example where about all the private equity firms benefit from these inflated figures. Any old private equity firm has IR in the 30% plus.